Thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on being accepted to UC Santa Cruz. My name is Jenny Moreno and I'm an admissions representative here in our Office of Admissions. And with me today, we have our guests of honor, um, our STARS office, which is uh, short for our services for transfer, reentry, and resilient scholars. We have a lot of good information for you today. Um, STARS will be providing a presentation and then we'll have a student panel. And once we're done with that, we'll go into a next steps presentation following with the Q&A session. And uh, on the note of Q&A, you can definitely drop your questions in the Q&A chat and our awesome admission staff members, um, which are Erin, Linda, and Sandy will be able to answer any questions as they're flowing in. And finally, as a side note, this session will be recorded. So if you happen to miss any information or if you would like to reference this presentation in the future, know that in a couple of days, this will be sent to you. So with all that being said, I will now pass it over to our friends at STARS. Hello, everyone. Nice to have you all here in this space. Um, my name is Jessica Parramoya, and I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am one of the transfer program coordinators for STARS, uh, uh, which stands for Services for Transfer Reentry. Re, re, we just changed our name and we added an R, so that's why we're having trouble. Services for Transfer Reentry and resilient scholars at UCSC, and so we are happy to be here with our our students who are going to be part of our panel today. And so this is a picture of our amazing team, the pro staff, and um, yeah, our new name with a new R added to it. Thank you. Ready for the next slide? So. The STARS mission is uh, to advance social mobility for transfer, reentry, and independent students by providing transformative higher education experiences. STARS guides students who disproportionately enter higher education through community colleges, including those who have experiences with transferring, returning to school at an older age, military, foster care, homelessness, incarceration, or family trauma. Um, we offer culturally relevant advising and mentorship programs and actively remove systemic barriers in order to create access, cultivate belonging, motivate persistence, and nurture wellness. Um, this is the STARS missions. Next slide, please. So within STARS, we have several communities uh, that we serve a population of students. Those three are our transfer scholars, meaning all of you who are, will be transferring to UCSC um, from any of the 13 regional colleges as well as all over California. Uh, we also have reentry scholars who, who are uh, veterans, military connected students, undergraduate students 25 years and older, graduate students 29 years and older as well. We also serve graduate students. And then we have our resilient scholars who are current former Yoster, uh, foster youth, which we uh, have our own program within STARS that is called the Hop Scholars. Then we have formerly incarcerated or system impacted scholars known as underground scholars. And um, we have anyone who has experienced homelessness prior to 18 and adver adverse experiences that qualify for financial aid independent status. So these are the three main communities that we serve under STARS um, within the various subunits that we have. Next slide, please. So programming pillars. These are the programming pil pillars that we focus on when we're uh, providing any type of programming support for our students. And when we are actually putting together uh, community building programming for our students at STARS. So pre-admissions equity outreach, which will be what we're doing today. Uh, transitional support, which is part of what our, one of our programs does within STARS. We have supportive relationships. We do retention and graduation. 
We make sure uh, students have a good experiential education by providing internships within STARS, as well as any type of information and support for campus-wide internships and opportunities. We also focus on the next destination, and we do a lot of advocacy for our students for campus resources in and outside of UCSC. Next slide, please. General program. So within STARS, we have an umbrella of subunit programs that serves particular uh, scholar populations that we just talked about at the beginning. So we have transfer programs, then we have resources for parenting students. We have the Veterans Resource Center. We also uh, have re-entry scholarships and resources for our transfer students. We have the Resilient Scholars Program, which under that we have Hope Scholars and Underground Scholars. And we have a Community College Partnership Program that serves uh, the 13 regional colleges uh, in the Bay Area. Next slide, please. So within uh, our efforts to continue to support the students and their transfer experience during that first year, uh, we do provide a class known as Krisky 25, which our director from STARS is part of the faculty that uh, teaches this class uh, together with graduate students and actual faculty from UCSC to provide an easier, successful transfer to, to the research university. Um, uh, we have we, the topics that the class features is support from accessing campus resources, understanding financial aid, how to build a, um, a financial aid focused budget, how to work um, Excel, learn Excel and work on that um, in upper divisions. They have a lot of intake on undergraduate research, a lot of opportunities and internships. They learn how to build their resume, how to build their cover letter, they they have uh, opportunities for you know inter the experience for that first interview so some training for a first interview when they're getting ready for a job and um, they learn a lot about the graduate school process as well and so this is a great class for folks who are just entering the process it's a two unit class and it is taught during fall and winter quarters uh, of the um, every year. So if you have wiggle room as you get ready to choose your classes, we would recommend Presque 25. It is specifically for transfer student. It was designed for you all. So it is a great opportunity for you if you have the time. Um, so yeah, next slide. Oh, within our, our uh, programs, we also have a general personal care and food pantry that starts uh, put together and was able to gain some resources to put together uh, coming from student efforts and, and one of our staff members. So we have a personal care pantry that offers all of the items there with that have to do with personal care from shampoo all the way to detergent and um, any personal uh, uh, cleaning products. And um, we have a food pantry as well where we provide uh, any, you know, fresh produce to uh, non perishables, and that's thanks to a partnership that our Veterans Research Center program coordinator was able to to kind of uh, collaborate with, with some folks uh, local in the area. So we're really thankful for that. And so no questions asked, students just come, sign in at the beginning uh, as they enter, and then they'll just grab what they need and there's no questions asked. So uh, those are two things that are really, really helpful for our students. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, resources. We have resources for parenting students uh, specifically through uh, STARS. So uh, those are student parents are any age. You don't have to hit the 25 and older mark. Uh, you qualified for those. Can be frosh and sophomores. Um, STARS enroll students with children under the age of 18 prior with priority enrollment. So within STARS, we work with um, the student parent organization to provide um, priority enrollment to students uh, who are parents. Uh, there's a link there that you will indicate your interest uh, for resources if you are a student parent. Uh, I will be providing the slides uh, on the Q and on the on the chat or Q and A for you all to to access them. And we 
also have uh, student parents are also eligible for our reentry scholarships as well as any other type of resources that we might have. And um, yeah, so if you're a student parent and you're getting ready to transfer, do reach out and uh, we will help you as much as we can with the resources that we have. Next slide, please. Reentry student scholarships. We have two reentry uh, scholarships at the moment with STARS. One is called the reentry, the um, for, well, backing up a little bit again, reentry students are those who are 25 or older, student parents who don't need to be 25 or older, student veterans or readmins with a four year break or longer. All of those folks are eligible for special scholarships through STARS. Again, at the moment, we have two. Um, and when we say student veterans, we go beyond that. So any student who qualifies for veterans um, uh, benefits or military benefits. So that includes children of uh, veterans and spouses and military connected folks. So full quarter, we have an application publicized during summer. And then for full quarter, you receive the Sylvia Miller Scholarship. It you are one of the folks who applies and gets chosen. And that's for incoming students uh, up to 2000 for first year at UC Santa Cruz. So at one point during the summer, you will receive an email if you decide to end up at UCSC from STARS, publicizing this full quarter opportunity scholarship. And if you do, um, are one of the recipients, you get $2,000 for the first year at UC Santa Cruz uh, during full quarter. Then we have our spring quarter uh, a scholarship and that's the one that uh, happens during winter quarter and you can use it at any point during the spring quarter during the summer or the upcoming fall so you would apply on spring quarter and then if you receive that uh, that particular scholarship you get a, a, an option to use it during summer school or to leave it for fall quarter in the upcoming year and it's, it's called the STARS Reentry Scholarship for new and continuing students to use during the summer or the next academic year. And it's up to $1,500 uh, proposals. Uh, next slide, please. So within our program, we have one of the main programs that we, we have is the Transition Mentorship Program, otherwise known as TMP, which I am the coordinator and some of my folks are here in the room as well. What the TMP does is a, a transition program that begins during the summertime uh, prior to you beginning at uh, UCSC for the first year. And then we walk you through that transition process and we stay with you for the first year of your experience at UCSC. Uh, we have capacity of up to 150 students only at any given uh, quarter of the year. So students come and go, they decide to leave sometimes after full quarter when they feel ready. So that's when we bring in more students who are still interested. And um, that's a support uh, program for students and um, where they do one-on-one -on -one interested mentorship. And you'll have, it's five students who have up to 20, 21 students to 25 students each. Um, so you have one-on-one -on -one relationships with them. Next slide, please. We also have uh, what we call the Community College Partnership Program, otherwise known as CCPP, through the Cultivamos Excelencia Grant for HSI. And what that program does is a bridge program between the 13 regional colleges uh, in the Bay Area with uh, UCSC. Whether they end up at UCSC or not, uh, we're just their presence to help them navigate the next step in as they get ready for the next step in their higher education journey. At the moment, I believe we've been working really closely with San Jose City College and Hartnell. And so uh, we have folks who have been working with my colleague, Francia, who is the program coordinator for CCPP. But this is a program that specializes on bridge, bridging the community college experience with the four-year uh, experience and whether they end up by UCSC or not. Um, next uh, slide, please. We have the Veterans Resource Center at STARS, as we said. So they serve all military connected students. That means active duty, reserve, National Guard, ROTC, its spouses, and dependents. 
Um, they offer community. They have free snacks and coffee. They do holistic advising. They have a lot of um, they have a lot of uh, mentors who support them and support their students throughout the time. And then you will have a way to connect with them. Next slide, please. Okay. The Resilience Scholars Program, known as RSP, uh, is the scholarship that the program that works that um the RSP program it serves uh system impacted students and so we have the hope scholars and the on the ground scholars uh students who have experienced homelessness prior to 18 years old or who have experienced incarceration and those include any immigration detainers as well as um, uh, incarceration, not directly the student, but anyone in their family or directed family. Next slide, please. Give me a second, I'll be. And the Underground Scholars, it is one of the two programs under RSP, and this is the one that uh, supports formerly incarcerated students as well as system impacted by mass incarceration, imprisonment, and or detention in any way. And this includes immigration detainers again. Um, and they offer again the community building, personal and academic counseling, advocacy, they have emergency financial support and awards for any less you know, medical expenses or things like that that come up. And um, we have peer mentorship programs as well with students. Uh, they kind of mirror what TMP is doing. So the same one-on-one -on -one type of relationship. They receive priority enrollment and early arrival and orientation. Um, and they have a lot of student leadership opportunities where students get uh, an opportunity to apply to work with them. And it's access year round. So you just have to, if you feel like you might be able to uh, that you fall under any of these categories and you just want to know, you can click here there to learn more or you can reach out there and, or fill out the interest form if you feel like you might qualify for any of these resources. Um, next uh, slide, please. And finally, this is our um, new <laughs> uh, updated a flyer that we have. And so there you have QR codes to our websites, to our staff information. So you just scan that. And then there's more information about peer mentoring, our open hours for the lounge uh, when we're in person and where to find us. We're located at UCSC Bay Tree Building uh, at the moment on the second floor of the Quarry Plaza right above the campus store. And, um, you know, you, you come and you do all those things, right? It's an open lounge, so people come. We have printing, study spaces, testing materials. We have mini, uh, mini kitchens with stuff, a kitchenette, so for students to warm up their stuff. We provide coffee and tea and some snacks when we have it. We have kids play zones for families and for student parents if they need a space. We have a computer lab, again, the pop-up food pantry and the personal care pantry. And we also have an area that we call the red room where there's a big couch with a screen and the PS5 and students come and either play games or they play Netflix um, episodes or something. And some people just take naps. And so that's what we need. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel welcome to scan those QR codes to learn more about our services. Um, you have access to the presentation. So if you wanna learn more about particular programs, feel free to, um, Take some time later today or later in the weeks as you come and learn more about our resources and um, apply to any interest forms if you do decide to come to UCSC or if you have already um, been admitted. Yeah, next slide, please. And so we have come to the end of the official presentation of what STARS is, what we do, um, the part, the types of, um, programs that we have, the, the, the populations that we serve and we strive to continue with our mission and also provide what we call holistic advising, right? So we look at not just the student, and um, uh, but the human being, right? And it's a lot of intersections there. And in order for you to excel in your academics, we first have to take care of, of you as a human being. So um, that's what we do. 
Um, so, but now we're gonna move on to our panel for today. We have three amazing folks uh, joining us today. Uh, the three of them are or have been students with UCSC. Two of them uh, are TMP students. They're, they're my students, they work under me. And, um, and then the other person is Nick and he is from the Veterans Resource Center. I, uh, he was a, also a UCSC student. So I'm really happy that they accepted to support me today as your panelists. And so I'm gonna allow them to um, and introduce themselves and then we'll move on with the questions that I have prepared for them for today. And then we will take uh, questions at the end that you might have particularly for us uh, and then we'll move forward, okay? So I'm gonna go in the order that I have them that I can see them in my screen. So first Marissa, if you can unmute and just uh, introduce yourself really quick, your position and um, your major probably. Yeah. Hi, y'all. My name is Marissa McGuire. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I hope that all of y'all are having a fabulous fun Friday. It's very windy in Santa Cruz. So a little hint, hint, get ready for the wind, the changing weather patterns around here. But um, I'm a STARS TMP lead transition mentor. I will actually be graduating. So it I'll, I will be replaced by a wonderful mentor, though. Her name is Marina. She was my mentee. Um, but I am majoring in intensive psychology, and I transferred from De Anza Community College. And then I'll pass it over to Nick. All right. Uh, tough act to follow. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good afternoon so far. My name is Nick. I'm a uh, fifth year electrical engineering undergrad, just getting ready to graduate. But um, don't worry, I will be around for another couple of years. I'm uh, sticking around for graduate school. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm uh, obviously a veteran. I'm supporting the uh, Veteran Resource Center staff. I was on the I was in the Marine Corps for four years, and I'll pass it over to Stephen. All right. Thank you, Nick. Hello, everyone. Happy Happy Friday. Um, my name's Stephen. I'm I go by he, him, his pronouns, and I'm a business management economics major. I'm currently going to transfer out uh, and graduate, which is surprising, <laughs> to say the least. And yeah, um, you'll be, hopefully, one of you will be mentored by Cameron, one of my mentees, my, one of my um, men mentors replacing us. Thank you to the three of you. Thank you for taking the time to be here today. Uh, can I get the minutes live just so that I can um, see uh, the questions and that everyone can see them as well, just for transparency purposes. Um, thank you so much. So I have four questions for you all and we will um, we will go with the flow and see who's eager to answer of the three of you or if not, I will popcorn one of you. Uh, but uh, so first question is, what organizations are you a part of and what role have they played in your experience? So is anyone eager to answer that question? Yes, Marie. Okay, I already have an answer coming to mind right now. Um, I'll name three, but I'll be short with the stars one. Stars. I was a mentee part of TMP when I first transferred to UC Santa Cruz, and it was an amazing experience. And because now I'm working here my second year, but I had a really close relationship with my mentor. Her name's Alexis, and she actually works with Renaissance Scholars now. So if you end up being part of Renaissance Scholars, then y'all will have so much fun with her. She's amazing. Um, another program that I was part of is the MINT program. It's offered at the Women's Center at UCSC. So within the MINT program, I'm sorry, I can't remember the exact like, acronyms, the words for it, but pretty much it's mentoring for those who are interested in attending graduate school. And I found that a very, it was very helpful in assisting with my understanding and where I wanted to navigate, how I wanted to how I wanted my years to look after I graduate from UCSC for my undergrad, I'm actually ending up taking a gap year, but they actually encouraged me to take a gap year because of like what's going on with my life. Like it, you don't have to go to graduate school right away, of course, but without mint support and learning about graduate school, they were able to help me reach that. Um, and then the last organization that I wanted to mention is um, EOP. EOP 
is also an amazing program for some community colleges. I know at my CC, they called it EOPS, but it's pretty much the same thing. I believe it stands for Equal Opportunity Program. And pretty much I use the counseling services there. And one of my counselors, his name's Maurice, and he was able to help me get scholarships and um, an internship actually. So just little places that you could navigate to. There's many more organizations and programs that are offered on campus, but those are three to name a few. Thank you, Marissa. Nick? All right, so um, I mean, I'm part of the uh, Veteran Resource Center and uh, by extension, we started a club this year called Student Veterans of America. And I mean, don't don't let the name fool you. Like we 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 take in people from you know all sorts of um, you know military affiliated backgrounds, and we uh, take on people that don't have any affiliation at all. It's more like you know um, celebrating uh, veterans and you know uh, dependents, spouses, all of which had to go through some kind of sacrifice or another. We're all about a uh, community building. So a big piece that I pulled from that was just having that community, which I think is one of the biggest challenges that you as a new transfer are going to struggle with. The vast majority majority of people coming in, they don't really know anybody coming in. So, you know, starting off with a community, I mean, I'm kind of answering the last question in a way by saying, but, uh, you know, uh, finding yourself a community as early as possible is definitely going to set you up for success. And uh, VRC has uh, come a long way for doing that for me. In addition, I'm also part of a uh, MEP, which is a, uh, it, it's a facet of a uh, MESA. Uh, MEP stands for the Multicultural Engineering Program. So uh, for all of you engineering, um, you know, STEM in general uh, students out there, they're an organization up on Engineering Hill that's their own separate community. And they offer lots of uh, peer advising opportunities. They they helped me personally set up my uh, academic plan because the at the time when I was setting mine up, the uh, en engineering advising was uh, pretty impacted with a lot of students. So they were able to sit me down and help me organize my plan and my path for the next you know, two, three years. So either of those organizations have been really helpful for me. And I would advise, you know, finding yourself a community with something like that. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Steven? All right. Um, for me personally, being a part of STARS really helped me um, through my academic journey because they were a helpful resource that I could consistently go to whenever I needed help with anything. And um, currently I'm a transition mentor, so I help um, transfer students such as yourself uh, have an easy transition to the university by providing them resources such as like basic needs resources, which is a big hit for transfer students. Like let's say the food pantry or the hygiene pantry and also some other resources that you know we could give y'all is like um, stuff like the Redwood Free Market, which is another um, food pantry and a ton of other resources, like a plethora of other resources that, you know, transfer students such as yourself um, could be guided on and drawn to. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, what does leadership mean to you and how do you embody it? So this time I'm going to play with the order and I'm going to Start with Nick. All right. What does leadership mean to me? Uh, it, it, I, uh, I pondered this question for a little bit, and I think to me anyway, uh, leadership means taking knowledge and experience you've gathered over your time, over your years, and sharing it with those that are you know, under your charge. You know, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, um, oh, I'm a boss, you're a subordinate kind of thing. It It is, a, you know, a mentor-mentee relationship. Um, that leadership uh, it has lots of different facets, but ultimately leaders serve those that they're, um, those that they're charged with leading. And I mean, what do I mean by that? I mean, setting an example and practicing what you preach is probably the best way that I can put about it. I, I hate to use... Uh, uh, Marine Corps Adage, but um, the best example I can come up with is, you know, you have two leaders telling you to dig a hole. You know, one leader is going to stand over you with their arms crossed while you're digging a hole. The other leader is actually hopping in and digging the hole with you. Which leader do you think you're going to listen to a little bit more? Now, it, that Adage aside, I think, I, I think it speaks a little bit to, you know, what kind of leader you want to be, because I'll, I'll finish off with this. Uh, practice being led first, 
and practice being that person that you want to lead in the future. And that's going to set you up for being a good leader. Thank you so much. That's amazing. Um, I'm going to play it around with Steven. And then I'll play with Marissa. Well, to, to be honest with you, I think Nick summed it up perfectly. Um, I guess something that could add to that is that leadership also means being, you know, being committed and sticking with your track, your graduation track and, you know, finishing it. And it also means being held account accountable for, you know, whatever assignments, um, due dates, what have you. Um, yeah, that's really what leadership means to me. And yeah, um, not much more that I could add to that. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Accountability, yes, for sure. That's part of leadership. Uh, Marissa. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I can't top Nick. Nick, that was well said. <laughs> um, I guess what I could add on to it is honestly just how I view leadership and like what it means to me is like pretty much picturing the person that you look up to who was like, who pretty much yeah who do you look up to and I think a big person at the time for CC was like my academic counselor like they were super supportive with me and then now that a little bit changed I, now I look up to Alexis I'm not gonna lie and some of y'all know who Alexis are <laughs> who she is and she's amazing and the reason why I look up to that person so much is because they were able to guide me and be respectful they were loyal they were like responsive they like provided me resources and honestly, that's how I embody it of my own. Like when I was working with my mentees, that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I wanted to be for my mentees. So pretty much, you know, just being that person and helping them out, I think, and just taking initiative on tasks. So, yeah. Thank you so much to the three of you. Uh, the next question is, what does your engagement with STARS consist of? And how has STAR supported your leadership development? So I think some of you kind of already touched on um, your engagement with STARS and what has that either consisted of or continues to consist of. But um, I wanted to uh, dig that a little deeper and how has STARS and any uh, positions that you have had with us uh, supported your leadership development? And this one, I'll let it be whoever feels eager to, to answer it first. And then well, I was going to say that, you know, STARS has really taught me to go out and pursue and actively find opportunities such as like events to attend to, um, clubs to join, and even like things to do in around campus. So STARS really pushed me to go out of my comfort zone and really put myself out there and attend these things, which was really great. Nick, I think I saw your hand go up. Absolutely. Um, I'll start with uh, piggybacking off of uh, what what you said a little bit. Um, completely agree uh, it, on the Veteran Resource Center side, but uh, they have also pushed me in finding different um, like classes and clubs to take. Matter of fact, just last week, last Thursday, I um, graduated this um, golfing class that was being held for uh, for veterans. Um, it was held by this uh, professional organiza organization called uh, PGA Hope that they took people from, you know, all calibers of, you know, golf knowledge. I was a complete beginner and they got me comfortable enough to play a nine hole with them last Thursday. So it, not to get too far off on a tangent, but, you know, simple classes like that get to meet people outside of school, get to meet, um, you know, it, diff different people from different backgrounds like that. That's been a lot of fun for me. And uh, I have the VRC to thank for that. Um, what I what I uh, wanted to say originally was I wanted to follow up on a TMP, the transition mentorship program. I full on took advantage of that when I first got here as a uh, as a transition student. And I so my first year, I was a uh, a mentee and my mentor was a huge help to me. He's he's graduated and moved on since then. But he was a uh, he was a huge help to me, pointing me in the direction of MEP, that organization I mentioned before that I then uh, signed on with them and I'm part of their community and then giving me all sorts of, uh, you know, tidbits, uh, pieces of advice here and there. He was also an engineering student, so he helped me a great big deal. And so when um, and so when I became a uh, fourth year last year, I uh, became a mentor with the transition mentorship program. Think of it as kind of a uh, pay it forward kind of thing. 
And I took care of, uh, and I um, mentored three new transitioning students coming in. And that gave me a wealth of practice in, you know, understanding people's different backgrounds, giving them, you know, the best advice that I can, like, you know, pushing them without uh, stressing them out, you know, pushing them to be the best versions of themselves without, um, you know, overly stressing them out, because goodness knows we all have enough going on, right? But uh, you know, ramble aside, I think the uh, the TMP was a uh, was a big push for uh, my leadership development, especially in this environment. Thank you so much, Nick. Uh, Marissa. Yeah, uh, for me, stars how it supported my leadership development is in multiple ways. I think one of my biggest ways or techniques, not techniques, but something that stars has supported me with my leadership development I would definitely have to say is like wanting to help and I feel like that's always been something with me but working at like the front desk and like people coming in or like just having questions um because I was kind of like almost a receptionist any mentors or once you come into the star space you'll understand it there's like a whole little lobby but at the front desk and honestly like I was just like on it like even if I was like doing the computer doing something else like I'd want to help these students with what they need help with so I felt like that was something that really has taught me something but not only that I feel like just like again the mentorship the TMP program um just being resourceful and helping other students through their academic and personal needs by all means like being a mentor within TMP I, I'm not no counselor not yet at least but <laughs> I mean it's something that really taught me to just want to be there for students because I'm, I'm a transfer student. I was first coming to the university at some point and that's what I wanted to do. And I think the very last thing that STARS has taught me, at least being a worker there, but I think with any student coming into the space, they could see this right right away. All the coworkers, it's a very like sweet, safe space. Like it's a fun work environment. And at least now looking at like other job opportunities and looking at the other job that I have right now outside of UCSC, I want to find a space that's very welcoming, that's like wholehearted. And if I don't have that, then I know like I could set that boundary for myself and look for that elsewhere. I would say that's what stars will embody. And as soon as you walk into star space, you'll see that. Thank you to the three of you for sharing your experiences with us, but also um, it's always great to hear how uh, we have been able to support you, right? And I think one of the things I, I wanted to, to touch on when I was introducing myself and I forgot is that I was also a transfer student at UCSC back in 2016 and I am uh, graduated in 2019 and I transferred from San Bernardino Valley College back uh, down in um, Southern California. And I stayed, right? And now I'm on this other end and now I'm working. I've been working for UCSC for about five years now. And, and so it's the same thing. And I worked at STARS as a student as well. And so it's like full circle when I had the opportunity to come to this role last September, for me it was full circle, right? Because it's, I started with them. I worked as in the positions you all are and have been. And so the TMP program didn't exist back then and the students in my my time and my generation, we kind of did all of the research and did the proposal to have what TMP is now. So for me coming back and, and being in these spaces and being with you all and now helping um, mentor you all and guide you, I don't like to call myself a supervisor. I like to call myself a mentor. And so that's what I do right with you all. So it's just it's a beautiful moment for me to see you all here and kind of hear what STARS has done for you because it's the same thing that it instilled in me, um, you know, in spite of the all of the other things that might happen, but the, the core of it, right? Like what we intend to do when we strive to do, keeping together with our mission and our culture. So I think that's really amazing and beautiful to see as you are getting ready to graduate and leave and, you know, cry, crying inside, but it's okay. Um, but yeah. We are coming into our last question for today. And so I just wanna open it up to what recommendations do you have for students wanting to develop their leadership by UCSC? So, uh, who wants to go first? Who wants to get a tackle at this one first? Okay, Nick. All right, I will, uh, I'll go ahead and leave off with what I kind of hinted at in the beginning 
is the best advice that I can give anybody, but you know, also students wanting to develop their leadership, becoming part of a community and getting involved. This can be uh, my personal advice, join a club or two, a uh, club that may or may not be you know, directly relevant to your degree, but join a club that you're interested in and getting involved with what the club is doing being willing to learn from and collaborate with other people that have you know all sorts of different backgrounds all sorts of different experiences there is so much to learn from other people because like i said be the person you want to lead before you become a leader that way yeah but um yeah leaving off with that is uh joining that community and getting involved you're not going to be voted president of a club on day one but if you're involved you get to know the people you get to know um, you know, what's going on within the club, you'll learn bits and pieces of, you know, what your leadership style is ultimately going to flourish into, and you can nurture that. And then as your time here, you know, continues to flourish, you'll be a lot more ready to step up and, you know, uh, fight for that leadership position and, you know, try to lead uh, your club into, you know, the next year and beyond. That's, that's my advice for you. So well said, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I would say a recommendation or a piece of advice I'd want to share with students who are wanting to develop their leadership at UCSC is honestly, as bluntly as it sounds, go be a go-getter. Just go and like, go discover what's happening on campus, whether if it's like even like a little tiny event that may be held like within a college, like C9 or something to like a big program or even research opportunities, go find it out on your own. I feel like there's people that could encourage you or like maybe like show you like a posting, but you're going to have to be the person to go reach that. Whether if that means like, obviously, again, like an internship, research, job, anything like that, or even just something that you strongly believe in. Like if it's a form of like activism that's happening on campus, if it's like a form of like fun event that's happening, like as like a collective within a group, I think that's my biggest piece of advice is because also it's just a fun, it makes your college experience so much better and you find out who you are, what your identity is. And I feel like that's a big part of the college experience, figuring out who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in. So go be a go-getter. <laughs> and I believe that was perfectly said by Marissa and Nick. Um, I don't know what more I could add to that. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I really, really appreciate the two, the three of you. Uh, you know, being here, sharing your time with with us, with the space, and um, I believe that's it for us. I think there's one more slide with um last minute uh, contact information. I mean, last contact information and stuff. Again, the slides were shared. The link was shared, and it's open to all of you to look at after the fact. I know I've seen some questions already come in and I was able to answer some of them. I know there's one pending about, I believe the form that was sent out by during the admissions process with the admissions emails about TMP for the link. So I'm gonna put the link on the chat. And um, at the moment that the interest form is closed because it's a Google form, but it will be reopened on June 1st. So uh, just, Mark your calendars so that by June 1st, if you're still interested, you go in and um, fill it out. And then we'll be reaching out if there's more capacity for us to accommodate more students in the program. But definitely fill it out because we keep a waiting list and we start adding folks as um, winter comes in and as um, fall ends, we we bring in students and then winter again. So there's an opportunity throughout the year to, to be part of, of TMP and have that one-on-one -on -one support. So, and as well, uh, the TMs, what we call them, right? The transition mentors provide dropping um, mentorship at STARS, whether that's remote or in person. And that's for everyone, not just for mentees within the program. That's for every transfer student that we serve and any of the populations that we serve under STARS. So even if you're not part of TMP, you're gonna have access to the TMs um, and um, whenever you have a question. So, and there's more student leaders. We hire about 31 to 37 per year within all of our programs. So you will have a plethora of different students to support you throughout your process and your time here. But I would definitely put that link on the chat and then uh, mark your calendars for June 1st when we will reopen it to, uh, 
see navigate uh, the wait list and um, if we have more capacity for full. Okay. Thank you so much. That is it for us. I will pass it up to our folks from our meetings. Thank you so much, Jessica, Marissa, Stephen, Nick. That was awesome. Um, we honestly got through a lot of the questions in the Q and A chat. So um, I kind of just came up with a last minute question for you all. I think it might have already came up and it might have already been answered as well. But can you reiterate who can be a part of Stars? And also, um, is that any transfer student? Oh, oh, Jessica, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm muted. I am so, so sorry. Um, so was I, what I was saying, it was that when students come to UCSC as transfer students and they decide to come to UCSC, they automatically become part of STARS. There's no application they need to fill out. We get that roster and we begin communicating with all of you um, about any upcoming events we're having, any internships, we have a newsletter that goes out every month and you'll receive that whether you want it or not, you become part of our family. Uh, you can choose to unsubscribe, but you will still get the information and um, you will receive information about all of our other programs uh, that way as well. Um, um, so there's no particular uh, in form that you have to fill out, you be automatically become. For the other programs like TMP, uh, Hope Scholars and Undergrad, no, for, yeah, for TMP and RSP related programs, such as the Underground and Hope Scholars, there are interest forms apart from, because they're separate programs and we have capacity. Like for example, TMP has capacity of up to 150 students at any given point of the academic year. Um, so that's where we, the, the interest form comes in and then we have to tackle capacity and all that stuff. but. Um, we open up every quarter because we have students leaving, right? As they feel comfortable with navigating the UCSC system, they, 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 they decide to withdraw and then we start adding more students in who are in our wait list. So, um, so yeah, no particular form to apply to just take part of STARS and also come and utilize all of our resources that we talked about. The pantries, the free printing, the computer lab, the lounges, the kitchenettes, anything that we do, any of our programming, and the dropping mentoring from the TMP folks and any other student leader that works for us, it's available to every student, uh, transfer student or reentry student at UCSC. So, um, but if you you want to take part of either you know the TMP program or see if you qualify for RSP or you want to take part in the Hope Scholars or the Underground, there's particular links to forms that you got to fill out. Um, the Veterans Research Center, I believe it's the same thing where if they're affiliated with um, veterans or themselves veterans, uh, I believe we, we get a list and then we start communicating. I'm not sure, Nick, if you have more information in how that works, but I believe that's how it might Oh, you basically hit the nail on the head. There's nothing more to say on that. We get a roster of all um, veterans and military affiliated students, so we reach out to them at the beginning of the year. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Honestly, this was so good. Um, and hopefully students, if they do decide to say yes to UCSC, that they take advantage right of the resources because you could just feel the community through the screen that um, happens at stars so um, yeah again thank you so much for joining us today yeah so um, with that being said we will now be transitioning to the second portion of our program so now um, I'll be giving the next steps presentation and also um, at the end we'll have a short Q&A session as well so let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Can everyone see that okay? 
Okay, perfect. I think yeah. I saw some nods. Thank you, Stephen and Nick. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, I, hi everyone. My name is Jenny again. And, um, again, we're super happy and proud that, you know, you were able to apply to UCSC and also get accepted. Um, with that being said, just a reminder that you can use the Q and A to continue dropping in questions, especially if they're related to like admissions or any other general information. All right. So, now that you've been admitted, uh, you may be asking yourself, what's next? What can I expect? And on the screen, you'll see five different areas that I'll be touching on further in the presentation. But again, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A. So um, the first step, if you do decide that we as a campus are good for you um, to attend is to review and accept your offer of admissions. So when you go through the process, it's actually a process that includes multiple steps. And we will call this process a statement, submitting a statement of intent to register or a SIR for short. So we might use those interchangeably. And um, I did wanna provide some screenshots so you can get an idea of what it would look like to accept your offer. But on the bottom left, you'll also see a QR code if you wanna see more detailed instructions on how to do so. So with that, um, the first step is to log into your my.ucsc.edu portal. And once you do, you'll see um, the page that has different icons and you're gonna to wanna to click on applicant status and info. Once you do, you'll uh, see a message that's congratulating you, but also has other hyperlinks. And some of those include the conditions of admissions contract, as well as the now that, what, that you're admitted, what's next? And so that's the hyperlink that you're gonna wanna click in order to begin uh, the SERP process. And uh, once you do that, you will see that there's going to be some more information to read through. Uh, but more importantly, in the first step is going to be your conditions of admissions contract. And you want to make sure you're reading through this carefully because your offer is conditional. So what it means is that you're still expected to um, meet the GPA requirements, major prep requirements, and also just finish strong at the institution that you're at. So um, it's very important that you keep those C and better grades um, and, and keep the courses that you said you would take. Um, but if for any reason there is uh, a change, whether it be in your schedule or whether it be in your grades, you can notify our Office of Admissions officially through the schedule change and grade issues form. Now, I don't know if we can drop that in the chat, but if not, uh, you can also find that information on our admissions website. Okay, so um, submitting the SIR, uh, you'll see that there's a page that will let you know of the deposit that's required at the time of submission. So you'll basically get to agree to that. Um, if you find yourself in a very difficult situation that's unique, and you can't come up with the money, there is an option to defer it. But I do wanna let you know that students do get chosen based on situations. And um, if you're interested, you can always let our Office of Admissions know. So we have that. Um, and after you read the information about the SIR, then you'll also um, have the opportunity to rank your college aff affiliation preference. So for transfer students specifically, you the college affiliation that you decide to go with um, technically doesn't have to match the major that you have. And it also doesn't have to be where you live at physically on campus, et cetera. So um, I like to tell students to make sure that they read through the different colleges that they wanna be affiliated with to best understand the themes and um, what they stand for so that they can you know, rank their colleges um, according to what they prefer. Okay. 
So um, still on the topic of housing, um, you're going to also be directed to a page that will show you your housing preference. So um, here you have two options. Either one, you can choose university housing that comes with a 150 advanced housing fee. Um, this fee will be applied to your fall quarter, so you're not just paying this fee to pay it. So we have that option. And we also have the off-campus housing option. Um, but what I do recommend to students is that if there's any slight chance that you want to live on campus, that you indicate university housing because it is a lot easier to go from university housing to off-campus housing than vice versa. Um, so that is something that I would remind folks of to, to consider. So we have uh, that and um, as a, a general note, for, for first year, transfer students do get housing guaranteed. Um, I know that can cause some uncertainty for students. Um, so I wanted to mention that we do have resources on campus that help students find uh, off-campus housing. Um, so that's called community rentals, and we will hopefully get that in the chat before the webinar ends. So we have that. And um, finally, for family student housing, um, I'll talk about it more in the next slide. But if you do want family student housing, it's kind of controversial, but you're actually going to put off campus housing instead of university housing. And that's because there's a separate application process that goes on for family housing. Okay. And um, and, and after you choose your housing preference, you will have the opportunity to put uh, parent information, but it is voluntary and um, it's not something that you have to do, parent or guardian information. Okay, so transfer student housing, these are the options that you have available. Um, we do have the transfer community at Porter College, which is cool because you can be affiliated to Porter College as well. Um, we also have the Redwood Grove apartments available for students that are 23 years or older. And we have the University Town Center that's still part of UC Santa Cruz housing, but off campus. And um, finally, we have the family housing, um, which is for students that want to bring along um, their partners or their children on campus. So um, as you come to the end of submitting your SIR, you'll see that you'll come to a page that has all the totals of what you owe. Um, and you can submit your deposit either electronically by check or money order. And once you do that, you will be directed to a congratulations page, um, which I like to tell students to take a screenshot or take a picture of it so that they can have it for their references. So now that we've gone through the process of accepting your SIR, and we talked a little bit about conditions of admissions, um, it's also very important to meet the deadlines um, that are coming up in the next couple months. So um, June 1st is the deadline to submit your SIR, but in June 1st, you also have the priority deadline for financial aid verification documents. Um, and if you want to check if you were selected for verification, I believe you should be able to do so in your to-do list. So we have that. Um, on top of that, we also have um, the July 1st deadline for official records. And this includes official transcripts from any university or college that um, you have attended, whether it was for one class or a couple courses, et cetera. So it's very important that you get those in. Um, I did want to mention that we do understand that there are students that come from quarter system schools. So we may get transcripts coming in a little later, which that is something our office considers. Okay, so we have that. And I'm not going to go through all the deadlines here, but know that um, around Late September, we will have fall move-in and welcome week, and the quarter will officially begin in September 26.
Okay, cool. So um, checking your my.ucsc.edu and your to-do list is very important. I would say check it as periodically as you can. And the reason for that is because as a university, we do communicate with students um, when we need certain verification documents, um, certain official documents. Um, so that will appear on your to-do list. And um, just to kind of give a little bit of context here, um, your to-do list will be found in your my.ucsc.edu portal. And you can see an example of how it would look like for you on the screenshot in the right. All right, so um, during the summer, we do have a couple of things available to you. So first is slug orientation, which is mandatory. And you wanna think of slug orientation as a first step towards your transition to UCSC. So um, it's basically a series of asynchronous online courses where you get to learn more about UCSC, the resources, and even get advising information and your, advise, your enrollment appointment as well. So it is mandatory, um, but with Summer Edge, it's actually not mandatory, and it's more for students that want to advance a little bit faster with their degree. Uh, so it's optional and um, both online and in-person courses are available to you. And for more information for either SLUG orientation or Summer Edge, you can always scan the QR code um, on screen. So um, I know I mentioned that uh, SLUG orientation is online, right? But don't worry, there's still an in-person component that we have, and that's Moving in Welcome Week. And personally, I think it's really cool because Welcome Week is filled with important activities and sessions specifically designed for new students living both on and off campus. So you get to um, mingle with other students, whether they're new, whether they're current students, um, and you also get to learn more about resources in person, clubs in person, organizations, etc. And um, of course, we had to um, put our services for transfer reentry and um, resilient scholars. And that was the theme for today, right? But specifically, um, they do service students that are transfer, re-entry, um, that have been part of the foster care system, um, that have been veterans, parents, etc. Cool. And um, on top of wanting to support you as a transfer student, we also want to let you know that there is academic support as well. I know um, one of our students, Marissa, also mentioned EOP. So there are programs like educational opportunity programs, um, the career center, and also uh, learning support services that will all in a way help you either with mentorship um, or tutoring, whether it's group tutoring, individual tutoring, et cetera, depending of course on the service. And um, I know that Jessica mentioned, you know, taking care of our students, right, holistically. And, um, and at UC Santa Cruz, there's also ways that we want to support you so you can be healthy and safe. Um, so we do have student health services on campus with professionals on campus, uh, as well as counseling and psychological services. Just to list a few. And um, with that being said, we will definitely still like to keep in touch with you. Um, one thing that I do encourage students to do is to reach out to their admissions representatives because they can also help you through this transitional period that you're in. Um, I also want to let you know about our social media handles. We do have Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. 
And it's really cool because not only do you get to see dorms and the campus, but you also get to even hear about like days in the life of students, etc. So I definitely recommend those. And you'll also see Sammy. And I think he's hilarious in, um, <laughs> in our social media platforms. But yeah, um, I want to just say thank you for joining us today. And that concludes our next steps presentation. Uh, we're going to open up the floor to Q&A. Let me go ahead and stop sharing. Thanks so much, Jenny. Um, I'm just going to encourage people we've got a little bit of time if you want to put things in the q a while you have all of us but jenny i did see one that came in uh, asking about you know our transfers part of that housing guarantee and i just i thought i'd ask like do you mind reiterating that point and maybe that'll give our attendees some time to submit some questions Yes, Erin, thank you for that. Um, so yes, transfers do get that first year housing guaranteed. Uh, very important though that you indicate um, on like during the SERP process that you want to do on campus housing. So it will come with that 150 deposit fee, um, but in that way you can, you know, get guaranteed that first year. Thanks, Jenny. Yes, that is. That is good news. So I'm glad we could double emphasize it. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice too, our, our, some of our colleagues in admissions answered a question about when we'll see things on the to-do list. So I just wanted to highlight that answer that, um, you know, for those of you that have already filled out your SIR, that's awesome. You're you're early. Um, you don't have to do that until June 1st, uh, but we love that you already said yes. Um, but it's after that June 1st uh, SIR deadline that you're going to see um, things show up on your to-do list. So um, one of our colleagues answered, you know, it's it's about a week after the June 1st deadline. So if you've already filled out your SIR form and you're going on your portal and you're worried that you're not seeing anything, I just wanted to point that out is, is that you're, you're just a little early, which is totally fine. Um, but definitely good job keeping an eye on it. I agree. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, I do see, okay, this, this is a good one. Um, I don't know if one of our, you know, partners or admissions folks want to answer this one, but I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, basically, student ask if you can go over the minimum or maximum number of units that can be taken if we do decide to take summer classes on campus. Um, so I'm going to be honest, I'm not really sure about that answer. Not sure if anybody else here uh, knows a little bit of info on that. Yeah, that's a great question. Probably our summer session staff would be able to answer that if you want to go over or under units. Um, I do know that we have a minimum amount um, that I'm looking up right now that has to do with financial aid if you're having that apply. So maybe um, we can go to another question and I can circle back once I pull that info up. Mm -hmm. And what I can also do is put the contact information too for Summer Edge. Um, if, you know, for some reason we can't get that question answered in the session, you could definitely feel free to um, to ask summer our summer edge folks. Yeah, that would be great. And while you're saying that, Jenny, um, I I found one answer <laughs> um, is that uh, if you are financial aid eligible um, and you've submitted, you know, a FAFSA that you want to apply to summer session, uh, you do need to enroll in a minimum of seven units to be eligible for grants. Um, including the Summer Edge Promise Award, which uh, covers seven credits of tuition and campus fees. So um, yeah, that's, I would say, if you want financial aid to apply, minimum of seven units. I don't know about their maximum. That would be good to ask. Um, they are intensive, accelerated courses. So my guess is that summer session uh, will 
you know, have have some advice and maybe even some policies on how much to take because uh, you because you will be in those classes for a long part of the day uh, for a sort of intense amount of time. So. Yes, I was going to second that, that the um, advice no more than two courses per uh, summer session, just because it is an accelerated um, session, it's either the five week or the eight week. So um, pretty, pretty fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was a question about Kresge 25, which I answered directly about if, if that's offered during the summer. Unfortunately, no. Uh, Kresge 25s only offer year round uh, on fall and winter quarters, and you can take it at any moment in your journey of UCSC. You don't have to um, take it like right away. We accept students, whether they're first year transfers or almost about to graduate, and you still want that support uh, and learn more about graduate school, they accept folks. So um, but yeah, unfortunately, we only offer it during fall and winter quarters. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jessica and Erin. I'm going to pull up the chat here, see if there's anything. Ooh, this is a good one, too. Um, if financial aid was already awarded for the 24-25 school year, does summer 24 get covered by, by that financial aid? Um, I actually, with that one, um, I'm I'm actually not as familiar with that as well. I don't know if Erin, you oh. Yeah, I, I see her. Our colleague Linda is typing an answer, so I'll just uh, read that okay. out loud. But uh, you would have to submit your 2023-24 FAFSA or DREAM application by June 30th. So that would be in addition to the 2024-25 FAFSA or DREAM app. So um, I can drop the link in the chat for our attendees. Um, just to let them know. And also another one of our colleagues let us know that summer financial aid is available for current matriculated UC Santa Cruz students um, who enroll in the summer quarter at UCSC or at another UC. UC. Awesome, thank you so much. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and I was I saw a question come in with the chat um, regarding residency. So I will say that, you know, in our registrar's office, um, they have residency deputies that can be it's kind of a cool name, <laughs> um, but they can answer questions regarding re residency. Um, it looks like our colleague is typing an answer. Um, so yeah, they are the ones that we would direct you to if you have residency questions, because those are important and we want to make sure that you are advised appropriately. Thank you, Erin. I do see that question is being answered. Um, yeah, so I know we are at the end. I'm going to... Um, stay on right for the last minute but I don't know if there's any well I guess I can make some last minute remarks um again thank you so much for joining us today I know um just hearing from our stars friends I feel like um for me personally I'm like yeah like that's really comforting to hear that there's like community at UC Santa Cruz that folks can rely on. So um, I definitely would say take advantage of that. And um, yeah, I don't know if anybody else would like to add anything else before we end. Um, I mean, I echo all of your sentiments, Jenny, and what a treat to have stars and some of its team with us um jessica if you want to offer any closing remarks it was it was just lovely to have you and your team here um, We're super no i, I think office. i can yeah thank you i think i can echo um, you all and thank you for inviting us for providing us this space to communicate with our 
students, uh, prospective students, or those who have already served. But um, again, echoing what Jenny said, um, you do have a community here for you. We work really hard to advocate to make sure we have this community. So do please take advantage once you make it here. And if you make it, if you decide to choose a new CSE, um, come visit us. Don't be a stranger. That's what I tell every student I meet, whether it's on Zoom, so mostly on Zoom, right? It's like, have you come to see the, this, the lounge? Have you come to like kind of experience the resources? So yeah, don't be shy. Just come on over and, and reach out, reach out um, with any questions. I love that so much, Jessica. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, students, for joining. And um, that will be all. Have a good weekend, everyone.